K.P. Singh is the eponym for DLF today. There was a time when he was about to sell his stakes in the company without adding a single icon in the Gurgaon skyline. KP's life is a story of unbelievable events brought together by destiny and put to good use by KP's ever wanting more attitude. Let's hear about the unheard, unknown twists and turns of his life with Times Now. Hello and welcome to Frankly Speaking. It's a pleasure for uh, us to have you on the show, Mr. K.P. Singh. It's been uh, a journey. Why don't you tell us something about how long has your career spanned and uh, how long have you been building homes and doing business from your younger days till today? Let me start the last uh, part of the question first. How long I've been building homes, I suppose from 1975 onwards. But earlier, I was involved in manufacturing businesses like manufacturing storage batteries under the name of Willard and precision electrical motors. All this while, I was a great horseman. I used to play polo. So it was a judicious mix of sports and looking after the manufacturing units. And before that, I had a quite turn and twist in my life. Before that, I was uh, in the army and uh, I was a commissioned officer in a very famous company, a, a regiment called Deck and Horse. I was there for, for nine years. And uh, I came into the army also by accident, frankly, because I went from India to do aeronautical engineering long time back. And uh, there, since I was uh, more in sports, and I was uh, said, used to play polo, tennis, and all. So I involved, got involved into a certain different crowd in England. And uh, so my talent was more horses and then uh, the actual engineering. So I was advised and that it's better for me to apply for the Indian Army, which had just started, we're talking 1940, just about the end of 47, just after independence. And I applied in, in, uh, in Sandhurst, which is the most prestigious place in England, to select officers. I stood first there and I came to Dehradun and I did two years I am trading. I may trading, and then I was nine years in this thing. Then thereafter, meanwhile, I got married in 1954 to a wonderful lady, and who we spent 65 years together, and a great companionship. She was a wonderful person to be, like a rock in my 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 life, and uh, so. And before that, I had a very twist, turn and twists. I was. I, uh, my early education was, would you be surprised? Was Spot. In, <laughs> in, in a place called Bullenshire, which is a city, UP. UP. So I come from a rural background. I was born in a village. And uh, so how village schools are. And uh, my, as my family moved, my father was a lawyer. So as he moved to Bullenshire, so, so did I. And I was put into a, a school, Madrasa first time, because... And From there, a Madrasa to education uh, the, abroad. The madrasa, so... And then the Indian Army, so, then uh, so, business. So, it's, it's been, so, it's been uh, a very uh, adventurous uh, journey, to, Mr. K.P. Singh. To stop five uh, months back, the Madrasa jumped off from there. After three, four months, I said, what the hell about am I studying? It didn't fit me. So then I did my uh, sort of schooling and college in Merit. And then, so it is a turn and twist, unpredictable. But, but whichever turn I took, I had one thing. I said, I will succeed. I had courage and determination. And uh, every part of my life I enjoyed, except the last one, where I was involved in building this township in Gurgaon. It was the most, one of the most difficult things 
to make a township. It is not, it, to you guys it looks very simple, but it was a very difficult pro process how to build a township. So that was the difficult part. That was the difficult part and the controversies surrounding it, did that make it even more difficult? No, there is never a, please understand, I don't think you, folks, uh, the most difficult part, first if I may say, there has never been a private sector township of this magnitude built ever after independence in India of private sector, not once, this magnitude like would go. And they will never be in future also for a reason. Reason is this, the most difficult part in, 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 thing, uh, in, in township is how do you acquire, how do you purchase land? Because land is in the ownership of feudal families. Now these families have normally a hectare or maximum two hectare. So when you're talking about thousands of acres to assemble say five, six thousand acres, and average holding is just about six, seven acres. Imagine the magnitude of people you have to deal with. Everybody has got fragmented pieces. You buy with one, the other guy will not give you. Other buy, you buy by the time the price goes up. And political benevolence uh, helps? No, political is not. It is a question of how you, the, 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 the classic example is, not political, I got nothing to do with it, is your own, how do you deal with farmer community? And please, can I mean, so I openly say, tell me one example anywhere in India where 6,000, 5,000 acres have been assembled without litigation and mostly all land taken on credit. I had no money, nothing. But I had one thing. I could give them this much trust and confidence in me that I will not let them down. So they had trust and confidence in DLA brand and in me. It took me 10, 15 years to work with every village, every farmer. I was a part of the family, every event I did. Everything which, which was carried out, like and it, you just can't pay a person money and get it. That's why you cannot buy land and then to assemble. And can you imagine without litigation? And get it contiguous. This is what I'm saying. Without litigation, there is no parallel. There is no parallel so far in even the world. I would be very happy to, to, to because somebody will say, very low key organization. I decided no managers with me. I had very low key, Patwari type, very low key people, but very competent because I had to do it myself. So when I was involved with farmers, I had to speak the same language. Hmm. I could because I come from a rural background. Secondly, I had to identify myself with them. Being an army, they're mostly retired soldiers who live there. Then thirdly, if there is any family problem, I had to try and resolve their disputes and all, including you'll be amazed that one day I go to the name of Sultan thing, a very important piece of land I want to write. And the guy was so they used to call me Kaptan Sahab because I used to go in a blackberry myself to identify that I'm an army man, Kurta Pajama, and uh, you can't go and tie his and uh, this thing. So this guy tells me, Sultan Singh, that Kaptan Sahab is still okay, but it's a small girl. I said, what? It's a small girl, it means daughter is grown up. I'm looking for a groom, a I speak the same language, my God. I live in my father in law was a prominent my father was a prominent man. I went there. I arranged this thing, I arranged the whole thing, my Mithai Shatai arranged the, the, the thing and the wedding I the, so these kind of things well done to identify yourself that you are one of the family members. Then only you can buy land. You can't buy land, otherwise. take it from me. Next one, when I say uh, playing polo or being army was great, as good as any, so this is not business. When I got involved in business of understanding how to manufacture electrical motors in 1961, so I resigned from the army. 
Okay. And I was blessed with one thing. I had a great mentor in my life called George Hardy. He was the chairman of uh, this Universal Electric Company, whom we had collaborated. I knew nothing about electric motor, but he trained me like his son. And I was trained, and that is where my entire foundation of business started. He told me, he said to do something, to go deeply into the uh, issue, micro means understanding totality, how do you acquire success? So when I went into buying land, I went in deeply, how do I su succeed? I cannot succeed just saying, pay so much money. No, there's a getaway. I have to succeed only by becoming one of them. Therefore, I have to know the entire thing about the family. So that is one. Frankly, thereafter, I would say, uh, my business of um, manufacturing and polo, the entire thing was nationalized and only public sector could do. So with the result, what happened is the noble objectives, I believe, that they thought at that time that the farmers will get more money, houses prices will come down, rents will come down, there will be planned development, and there will be no corruption. Exactly the opposite happened. Because in a democratic country, people want better homes. Now, how, where do you build homes? Is there no developed land? Where do you build homes? So a new breed of developer came. They brought the bad name, the business. We call them fly-by-night operator. So they did that wherever they saw land, they built homes without any development. In nexus with town planner, politicians and bureaucracy, paid money. And so that is where the corruption started the business completely. So DLF went out of the business in 58. Because once it was banned, we said, okay, we'll get out. We went to manufacturing. Till I got involved again, my family pushed me in 1976. He revived this business again. So it was a tough task to A, to get all the laws reversed. Two, archaic laws. But the most difficult part was, and most difficult was, how do I assemble by thousands of acres of contiguous land with no money. Money came to me afterwards, not just. So not I, for the first project. No, so so it is, I achieved it. And this is a great experience. Would you believe, I, mean, this is, I wrote my book, I don't know whether it's my autobiography yes. in this one. For almost 10 years, my life from a sportsman, polo, golf, it all changed completely. Then I used to be I obsessed with one thing, I must succeed. So what I used to do, at about 12.30 in the night, 12 o'clock, I used to leave in my ambassador car, I had a roll seat. That was my sleeping. I respect and trust. I could go and have first cup of tea with them while they're still lying in bed. That I will call with my second achievement. Why? Because it is only you can do it when you build relationship of trust and confidence. So I went there. I used to discuss all these issues. Then came around, had official discussion. To the, then I had to leave back for Delhi. And then I was the totally different business. is General Electric, most high-tech company in the world. I was the national advisor. Then I become director of this thing. For the businesses, space, locomotive, power, defense, electronics, everything you call it, at the highest level. So I had to there, I had to bear suit back again. See, come back home, change your kurta pajama, blackberry, and farmers. This 10, 12 years, I would say, if I had not done it, and I will see how many people in the world can do it. So, Mr. K. P. Singh, uh, without uh, without this relationship building uh, with with let's say the chief ministers, uh, is it possible to do business? in India in the past You're and possible, today. Uh, do, possible to do which business? Real, real estate, estate? No, real estate is very peculiar. In industry, you don't need any of these things, not at all. Look, for example, even today, we don't need today because once you, the most difficult is zoning of land. Buying land in the correct place that you need vision. All land developments have not succeeded. Take Lavasa, for example, 
It started good and then failed. Hell of a lot of people. The success and my experiences that in my life, if I had not done it myself, I was, I was a single man army. I decided not to have a high key organization with me because you know, I cannot build relationship without I could sit with ease with a patwari. I could sit, sit with great ease with a, with a town planner, with a commissioner, then with the chief minister in the same wavelength. This, I could do it. And unless I had that relationship and flexibility, I could not succeed. In fact, very humorous side of the story, I'll tell you. I was uh, in, one, uh, in New York one day, and then I was on the board of G. Board of G was a very high power. Henry Kissinger was on the board. Sam Walton, can you imagine? The biggest name. So I was supposed to be presenting India. Imagine change completely. And Miss PowerPoint presentation, so I was staying in a hotel, and I just prepared, and at 7 o'clock, I was just walking. And then I got a call from my office, Delhi. Here, my Loki guy called Amrita Lal Jain. He said, KB, it's a very important job. I said, what is it? I said, I'm going to be focused on my mind. What is the presentation? He said, there is a patwari. He is doing a lot of work. He said, I'm going to talk about CM. He said, I'm going to take our land and take our land. He said, I'm going to take a lot of work. I said, I'm going to take a lot of work. He said, I'm going to take a lot of work. He said, if it doesn't happen, then you can't take the land away from me. Would you believe I rang up the chief minister? By 12 o'clock, I told him, I had that much relationship. I said, the chief is a crook, the guy is to do. They changed him. Take your land to someone else and give it to you. And give it to you. So the issue simple is that by the time you speak with the policy maker, with the person who can transfer, you report to them, this guy is, uh, we are developing and in between the piece of land is purchased by somebody else. Then what do you, you eventually, you, you can't put your road, impossible. So before that happens, you have get to do, so it's a difficult business, that's what I'm saying. It's the most difficult business. Are there quid pro quos with politicians? No, zero, How nothing, to, nothing, I tell you, zero, reason. Politician can't do anything, nothing. We could have paid to, to Patwari a little money. We in my life, I have not paid anybody. I, I, I do election time, yeah, sure. But this felicitation, I have not done anything. There's a classic case known anywhere. I have done it with my conviction, with my courage, and with my building relationship. And every time, I can tell you, I succeeded, except Bansilal, who was only after me for, for different reasons, without no, any rhyme or he was I was a hero with him once. On one issue, I became zero. So he was a different person. But other than that, I do this year, Devi Lal, all, all the they're very good chief ministers. Uh, Ariana is a classic example of good chief ministers. And, and uh, uh, the controversies uh, revolving around the Gandhi family, the town planning changes that happened, Robert Wadra, uh, the land that he had, the, you know, the kind of money operations that happened. Uh, well, you know. let, let me talk about my company relationship, whatever. You asked me just now. About you people, nobody has even understood why it happened. Our business is to see the heterogeneous species of land to buy before somebody else can buy. And if somebody else who has bought, we have to buy from them, our services cannot go. Or somebody's land becomes some that our entrance to, to our township is and bang in front, somebody buys the land. Now this does not happen in Nevada, for example, because in Nevada, which is correct, government acquired land, then auctioned it out. This is the way it should be done. But good, uh, Haryana is the only uh, state where only one city is made, where you have to buy your own land. Government will not help you in acquiring land. So when you do that, what happens is, please understand what happened. And this is earlier happening in Delhi also, after independence, the, all the 21 colonies, we did the same, the whole development. You have to private sector to buy land, but they were small pieces, G GK minus 200, acre, other one, 180 acre, but it's not 5,000 acre city. So what happens is nothing. It is, if there is a smart person 
I have, I must have made at least 50 millionaires with, with me on this thing. Why? Very simple thing to do, smart people. That when you are developing something like me or for any other developer, unfortunately, they are on public domain. On website, you can see there is a senior town plan. Any public man can see, go and see the plan. In any case, when you sell, you have to show the plan. But it's developing what? And exactly you, they see which war and N.A. Patwari. Ye zameen mein yaha, once the development is going, your road has to go through, your service has to go through. So the smart people, what they do, they a smart businessman, buy that and sit on it. Nothing. Now, the worst thing is if the, equality, if the developer has failed, then it is like you, you get zero. But 90% what happens is that buy into area where the developer is success story. So this is, the more they sit, the more money they make. Our thing is we always see, we will pay as long as we get 2x, means x is the amount we have to pay to somebody to buy. We have to make 2x profits. It, a classic case, like take for example DLF Center. You have been to DLF Center here? Yes. When we made DLF Center, we paid compensation to each tenant about 10 lakhs at that time. 10, 10 15 lakhs. There was one guy who was a pawn shop, a small little damn pawn shop, smart cookie. He won't leave it. So we know everybody that India laws are such. You go to eviction, so finally we had to pay him. He said, you have to pay to crore. And if you haven't given it, then you will get a He was a smart cookie. We had to pay him one crore. Because we had to make our building. But we made it. Look at the amount of money we make. As a businessman, it is not a question of, it is a question in this business, what is money? For example, Mafkarna, you are a journalist. If I want to be a journalist, I can't be. I'll fail. But if you want to be developer, you will fail. Absolutely. So it's, everybody has their own trait. So they have the trait. As I said, Mere Saathi 20-30 people who had the land of the land of the Finally, we had to buy them at a certain price. But our formula is we must make 2x. Simple. So in that case, what has got politics got to do? इंडिया is India becoming more attractive as a destination for doing business? How do you see the landscape on this score? Well, coincidentally, yesterday, Hindustan Times people were interviewing on the same subject, so let me repeat what I, I said. There is a sea change in the outlook of the world as far as India is concerned. After Modi ji has come to as a prime minister, he has changed the image abroad of India. Earlier, the image of India was developed, but now it's a very fine, top class image. So, the issue is people don't come to invest only because of image. When a person comes to invest into India, he needs a couple of things. One, smart. The issue is that these are plus points. What is the negative point? Negative point is when you come, our system of governance, ease of governance. Because when you come, for example, imagine a township I explained, is it possible for any foreigner to come and set a township? A township? Impossible. Because it's such a complicated system that you get tired, you will run away completely. So in industry also, they have to substantially bring reforms to make it easy for a foreign person to do business in India. Lot has changed. Lot has changed from what it was, let's say, 10 years back, 15 years back. But lot has yet to change also. We are on the right track, very right track. Number, number two, 
the taxation wise please understand today china people most companies in china are waiting to go out of china where are they going today vietnam vietnam why have you anybody studied vietnam for two reasons not for the third reason they not got, but first they have got very good infrastructure urban and rural very good. vietnam is a small country but infrastructure but the second thing is yeah. they have given heavy incentives in taxes so it is now there is no reason the first preference of any uh, foreign entrepreneur would be to invest in india because they have confidence in mr modi's dynamism and governance you see outside people see he you know his strong governance and likewise so my feel if only they could do two things make it ease governance accelerate uh, the pace and number two very simple thing today if i were the I mean, take the other day. I was listening to Yogi Adityanath um, in UP, extremely dynamic chief minister. Look at the number of roads they have gone through. Look at the quality of roads. So simple, what they have to do: acquire the uh, land around the roads, as has been done all over the world, both sides. Come, then parcel it out and invite people to come and invest with only one condition: anybody who brings. industry from outside like for jaira give them those tax incentives as are applicable like in vietnam better than that to hoga usse kya people will come here so you may forego 10 years of your tax but after that but meanwhile look at the employment you generate look at the taxes will start flowing in i for one believe this is the right time because your highways have come, come through and of course one problem which always remains is in india is urban infrastructure that is frightening when I mean, people think of it all because as you expand india there will be more migration from rural area you need wider roads you need better accommodations now that is uh, not happen and i hope it will happen i'm sure with the, with the, um, as they said with prime minister like they could do it look look at vista uh, central vista i went the other day to see despite all opposition completely we will make have it is made one of the finest places today would you believe it i was driving i couldn't find it all because it's so merged with the environment trees and all and you see the buildings he did it he said this thing and today everybody say oh very good so indian by nature will say and only the person who can take this decision is our prime minister because he is known to have a dynamic vision and dynamic prime minister so if if it comes in his head that it make it ease of governance and bring your taxation down for those people who are dislocating their business here you will be amazed unprecedented foreign investment will come into an unprecedented like of which no country can get it i'm optimistic about it but these two things they have to change and thirdly improve urban infrastructure because without that there will be a mess all traffic jams will take place and as you grow as you know you the imf has said that india will grow uh, 5 trillion in 5 years time so 5 trillion yeah i bet like hell in my view it is not 5 trillion take it from me it will be exceeded because the amount of policies today which are economic policies are so superb that's why the economic growth is happening everywhere people may say anything but fact of the mean is entrepreneurs are investing but do you want bigger investment to come in you have to scale it up with scale it up so this is the only but urban infrastructure needs a complete new look do you think smart cities uh, was a good idea has it really seen the light of day no in fact i have written a paper on it you must read it and this is a very important a thing for responsible media to bring it out you see the problem so has somebody asked a question why one third of india today is living in slums or unauthorized building one third why reason is only one 
In 1958, 58, they took a wrong decision, the then government, with a noble objective, I believe, as they said, they removed the private sector from the business of urban development. With the result, there was no developed land, people made wherever they were, the new people came out. Now, with the, uh, of course, emergence of Gurgaon and then enactment of RERA law, which Modi ji is a wonderful law in, in, in uh, 2016 or 17, that corruption is ended, finished, gone. Today, there cannot be any corruption in, in real estate because little corrupt thing, either jail or bail or bankrupt. That's why you don't find people. Because how many, if you see really the builders, a lot of things have vanished just because of one good de uh, uh, decision of this way. So my gut feeling is, answering this complication, yes, I'm very optimistic. More investment will flow, but ease of governance and taxation has to be made competitive with other places and put uh, Vietnam as your benchmark because then people come here more. Mr. K.P. Singh, I also want to ask you, uh, I, I read somewhere that you mentioned that uh, we're reading about George Soros, we're reading about the Hindenburg report uh, just ahead of uh, the Adani FPO. And I read somewhere that uh, uh, you had a similar experience uh, when uh, DLF was coming out with an IPO. So is this, is this something deliberate uh, or, or do you think the government is overemphasizing on the foreign hand uh, of foreign um, uh, you know, powers who are interfering in India's business growth? Well, firstly, see, these are my personal views. I'm here today. I'm not in an executive position, so I'm at least I've got this freedom to say what I feel like saying. If I was executive chairman, I would not have said a lot of things, but I'm saying what I really believe. First, please understand that whether it was George Soros or whether it's Hindenburg Report or anybody, what happens is a lot of people, when you, when, when you, when you rise in life, is known to be just law of gravity. Of, the more you rise, law of gravity try to pull you down. So there will be a lot of people who are jealous around you. People are jealous of India's growth. But to say that they are trying to, their small little peanut, can they ever influence India? Possible. But like some George Soros you are talking about. See, he's a man who has made money only in speculation of foreign exchange. How the hell does he know about what are the issues of India? So just commenting on by uh, some comment made by him, I will say I will say it's very, very, very unfortunate, uh, and he, should, he had no business of commenting. It's wrong. Our company is known to always work in compliance with law. If you want, but if you got something, we will learn from you. Publish. We are not saying don't, because they only want like money. Is it blackmail? Always, always blackmail. What has the Indian bank done? He's short say, India should not react, in my view. No, because so many, as I said somewhere very loosely, people will say, because you are rising, the country is rising. And when you rise, please ex ex expect some people who will be jealous, who will be taking a pot shot on you. You keep doing what your apka dharma kya hai. Keep doing what you are doing. Some other will fa fa fall wayside. Wayside. Kuch nahi hona. Lekin hamari opposition to chhodti nahi hai muddo. To wo bhi wayside mein chale jayenge. Ye subject dekhiye na. Ab ada nahi kaha. Mujhe kisi ne pucha ada nahi kaha. Main nahi jaanta aaj aaj. I respect. Ask me. Well, let me. अरे अदानी जी इज एन एंटरप्रेन्योर. Entrepreneurs means basically I was a junior Adani when I took Gurgaon develop. Several times I could have been bankrupt. There was a warrant of arrest against me by Ansilaji for no rhyme or reason. I was doing the right thing because people. Oh my God. And look, eventually, I was determined I will do the right thing. I won. They failed. Same way, Adani is a risk taker. I do believe today, if you see his, all his units are doing reasonably well. But 
as a businessman, you have to know that you have to have a certain amount of equity base to, to, uh, to finance your, your debt. And when there is always a ratio, like bank will never give you money unless there is a ratio, like two to one maximum. So he was trying to do at this time, beefing up his capital by getting FPO. He failed. But he will rise again. Is these business people, you fail temporarily, you come back. Provided his all business units keep doing what they are doing. And it is not correct to say, in my view, that any government can influence a bank today to give loan. No. Because how can Chanda Kocher went to jail? After that, can any official in the bank, the bank give you a loan only based on a certain norm? based on your balance sheet, based on exactly, they will not violate anything. Like, if, you see, there's, these, are, these are called PEP, P-E-P. -E Would you believe when you go open a bank account? If you are PEP, no, you can't open a bank account. PEP means politically exposed person. India is not If it is PEP, then you can account in your open account. When you, would you believe that you can open account? A column is, are you in NBA directly a PEP? Where you are, you have a PEP, you have a friend, you can open the bank account. So, this is also the same. So, my meaning is that this is not the same thing as the friendship. It's not the same thing that you can be influenced to get any monetary benefit. That's your own thing. You're risk, you're taking risks. Tomorrow, आज तो ये कहने की बात होती है ना तख्त या तख्त आज तो चल रहे हैं बड़े से अगर एफपीओ सक्सेस हो जाता तो एजेक्यूटिव बेस वर विल बी स्ट्रॉंग तो डजन मैटर इफ इफ इट कीप्स ऑन परफॉर्मिंग इज यूनिट्स आर डूइंग क्वाइट वेल आई सो एवरी यूनिट सो यू आफ्टर सब विल बाउंस बैक अगेन दिस इज द स्टोरी ऑफ बिजनेस पीपल अप एंड डाउन आई डोंट नो एनीथिंग एल्स अबाउट हिम हैज हैज पॉलिटिक्स चेंज इन इंडिया पहले जमाने में क्या इतना कॉन्फ्रेंटेशनल पॉलिटिक्स हुआ करता था स्पेशली इस तरह के मुद्दों में वेर वेर प्रॉब्ली नेशनल इंटरेस्ट पॉसिबली ग्रोथ ऑफ इंडियन कंपनीज इंडियन इकोनॉमीज कंसर्न वो भी एज डिवाइडेड अर्लियर ऑन बिकॉज यू हैव अ लॉन्ग एक्सपीरियंस एज वी आर नाउ वेल I don't know to tell you on the see you know system of governance or you know, system of comp let's say constitution. I mean, I I will be I'm debating, which I, but I see as a citizen of the country. I mean, I, this is my personal view. No, India needed a very strong governance from the top, and we have fragmented all the states. India is a continent, not I mean every state has got their power now. When you bring economic development versus like take China, why have they developed so much? Because they have complete control they could do. For India, we, are, we have got a parliamentary democracy which does affect the power of the top man to do what he wants to do because he has to carry the states with him. So it is a situation every state, but I see very interesting things are happening, very interesting, that every state is competing to become something, take UP, even uh, like uh, uh, UP, uh, I saw Maharashtra, or, or I saw even uh, uh, Rajasthan, or every state, they have to compete. But things are changing, they have changed for better, not for worse. Mr. K.P. Singh, you're going to be awarded a Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, by the way, how old are you? Lifetime makes it feel uh, uh, as if you have to do anything. Do you feel that you have done everything? No, that is not true by nature. I am uh, very much doing a lot. But now it is necessary that you have to apply to the biological age. You are you in your 90s? ये तो आप मुझे बताइए मेरी एज क्या है आप लगते नहीं हो आप you look like somebody in your seventies maximum thank you for the comment that is generally है and I do feel that by the way I play golf even now eighteen 
and I, I um, work even hard, and I am now in the process of trying to set up my own foundation by my own name, because I do wish to leave a substantial part to, so that that becomes a set up to take care of people which I could not do in my life. I could take my company up very well. But the great satisfaction America I have is not one company, just see please. DLF today is 76 years back. Would you believe DLF was incorporated few months before the partition of India took place? And after that, DLF had consistently the great work done by my father, late father-in-law. Fantastic, 21 colleges. There. Then there's a gap. 28 because the national, the national 58 we stopped. But then I came back again myself. So I came back, and throughout our principle of business has been ethics and moral values are the most important for the brand, not taking shortcut, and always in compliance with the laws of the land. Started then, I followed, and I'm very happy to say, my son, who is one of the finest entrepreneurs today, you'll see, look at what the buildings he's making. His, his slogan is, better than the best. So when we make buildings, we don't make buildings here. We send team abroad. Find out the best thing, what is happening in the world. Then you see Camille, you see phase, or phase five, all being done by him. So then the fourth generation was there. So four generations in the same business with constant appreciation of the values of the brand, admired. Can you give me one example in India after independence? We did research, we couldn't find any company. Of course, real estate, there's none. But otherwise also, there are very few companies. So I feel very happy and satisfied that I think God has been kind. There's a great blessing, but I do believe my parting advice to all people is, because my now I'm not active, please pay attention to urban development because more cities you create, more employment will get generated. And that is, a, otherwise you will have a very uh, sort of road which are not wide enough to take traffic, there'll be traffic mass, growth will take place. So I think, Big attention is needed to urbanization. You are into the luxury segment. Today's uh, Bharat, uh, India and Bharat, ka fark, uh, any, any aspirations to also look at uh, housing for lower middle class? Yes. Look, the principle hote hai, when you say better than the best for lower middle class also, the same two room tenant you, you make, you make an area for them, you can look quality-wise, What? how do you want to make it? The whole idea is, whatever level you do, try and do for that level and for that payment, because after all, everybody has a, has a purchasing power. Try to do the best. We have substantially been in the upper segment, but not to say that because the regulations of Haryana government have been such, that 15% of what we develop is for economically weaker section. And I for me, say now that the future plan should, master planning should be, which is the wrong way, the planning of the view. But, you know, if you develop for migration of, of people, the rural people will come. Plan area for workmen. So and connect them properly with the good trainer to the main center of working, as is being done all over the world. Because you found little COVID, everybody was, migrants were running back to their home. Don't have to. A lot of changes are required. India needs changes. Well, we hope these changes happen in uh, your lifetime, in our lifetime, uh, because India needs to walk fast on that uh, path of change and development. Once again, we congratulate you, Mr. K.P. Singh, on your achievement and uh, pray for your good health, well-being, and of course, uh, looking at Indian industry and guiding it uh, like the beacon you've been. Thank you very much. Thank you.
this is the life story of Mr. K.P. Singh, who experienced several twists and turns in his life. Starting from a humble beginning to where he is today, a living legend. His achievements were recently recognized by Ernst & Young with a Lifetime Achievement Award. Ernst & Young is widely recognized as the only Global Business Award program that brings the best entrepreneurial talent into the spotlight. Enjoy the short film in seven episodes covering his life's journey. What does it take for one man to build a future beyond anyone's imagination? There is no greater force on earth than a man determined, stoked by fire in the belly, unwavering grit and a perseverant mind. Decades back, one man had the courage and audacity to challenge the future with his vision. The vision of a new India, standing tall, elegant and shimmering with possibilities. Offering a lifestyle not experienced before and attracting new businesses and talent from across the world. From small beginnings and burning dreams are edifices sometimes built, much as a tiny acorn leads to a mighty oak. Hailing from a small village and a humble background, Mr. K.P. Singh traversed from a madarsa to private schools and colleges. Life can sometimes deal you wild cards. And thus, it was an accident of fate that led K.P as he fondly called to meet the then Viceroy of India and become an avid sports person. Riding horses while playing polo and dashing across the tennis court to enthrall one and all. Much as sports became a passion, KP travelled to UK to study aeronautical engineering. The passion of horses saw him dabble with the polo aristocracy in UK, including the then military advisor to Indian High Commissioner in UK, Brigadier Vadalia, who persuaded KP to join the Indian Army. Always a believer in head over heart, KP took the hard decision to join the Indian Military Academy, where he distinguished himself and served in the famous cavalry regiment of Indian Army called the Deccan Horse for nine years. I enjoyed that phase thoroughly, KP now recounts. Around this time, KP married Indira, whose family owned the real estate company called DLF. A new journey began. Incorporated in 1946, just a few months before partition, DLF was founded by Chaudhary Raghavendra Singh, a man with true vision and passion. Saw him create 21 most prestigious colonies in Delhi. DLF shut down completely in 1958 due to nationalization of urban land development business by the government. Thereafter, the group diversified into manufacturing of precision electric motors and storage batteries with KP handling the helm. It was in mid-1970s that KP took upon himself the uphill task of reviving DLF. Despite the fact that the business of urban land development was banned by law ever since 1958 and banks were not permitted to loan money to urban land development business. DLF had no money and no organization, having been a closed entity for nearly two decades. But there was foresight and there was 
a dream. Most called it impossible. But KP's vision was to establish a modern city on the outskirts of Delhi, a global township that is known as Gurgaon today. Here again, the immediate bottleneck was the ownership of land, which was scattered into feudal families, with 5-6 acres resting with each family. Whereas to create a new city, several thousand acres of land were required. The biggest challenge was to reverse archaic laws, buy the land without having money and creating a contiguous block of thousands of acres of land. It was a task that seemed impossible to everyone. But KP's vision, determination, courage and guts made him tackle the impossible. To purchase the land, he had to win the trust and confidence of farmers, which took over a decade, eventually making them partners in progress. It is unheard of anywhere in the world that land could be purchased on credit. KP turned into a single man army with only a few low-key staff to support him. He personally lobbied at every level of the government to push for a change in the outdated laws while simultaneously pursuing the purchase of land. KP would travel to Chandigarh two, three times a week, sleeping on the back seat of his car through the night, eating at Dhabas, meeting ministers in the morning, liaising with officials and town planners, and thrashing out pending issues relating to his proposed venture. KP would thereafter drive back to Delhi, poring over General Electric's corporate papers on high-tech business, encompassing space, aviation, locomotives, power, turbine and consumer durables, etc. As GE's national advisor in India, he would attend meetings with top government officials and policy makers. KP ended up being the catalyst who persuaded the legendary Jack Welsh, chairman of GE, to visit India and invest heavily in the country. This got the interest of other global corporations who followed suit, which opened the floodgates of FDI into the country. Some bureaucrats and political personalities were not in favour of my initiative to establish this township. In fact, one day, I suddenly told that the entire phase two area of our development of about 300, 400, about 350 acres was notified by government of Haryana housing department for establishing a housing set up for the middle income group. What we call it affordable housing. So when I was told about this, fortunately the chief minister at that time was Chaudhary Bhajan Lal, who was an extremely competent and good chief minister. So I said, how this has happened? So it came out to one jealous bureaucrat who was secretary of the housing department who had the powers to notify. He just notified. Anyway, after some time, yet another bombshell came. In the morning, when I was glancing through the newspaper, I suddenly found a full page ad given by Haryana government saying that all development license of DLF in Gurgama stands cancelled and therefore all actions thereafter would be a criminal activity. It was so widely advertised in, in several newspapers for several days that when a reporter came to me and asked me for my views, I said, look, DLF has never done anything wrong. It is completely baseless on wrong facts, but obviously it was a personal vendetta 
of the then Chief Minister Chaudhary Bansi Lal to pull me down. And when we asked why, reason, we were only told by the bureaucrats the orders from higher ups. So when the journalist came to my office to ask my reaction, I said, "Look, DLF has never done anything wrong, never been violated any law. So it is a case of like a bull in the china shop." Now this enraged the chief minister next day, called the all the officials and the police. They let us show KP Singh what a bull means, and then the whole power was unleashed on me. Police arrest me for for no crime. I had done nothing wrong, but they were just against development of Gurgaon. So. When this happened, naturally I was rattled. So when I came back home, my late wife Indra was so mature and bold. She told me, "She said, 'Look, KP, don't get scared. Remember what Jack Welch told you.' I said, 'What? At that time, DLF was not even 30 number because the others.'" Who were much bigger developer than DLF, and Jack Welch told that KP, any business you do, you must be number one. So she encouraged me that to be number one, you have to take risks, because you know you are doing right thing, and God is with you. Everyone's blessing is with you. Go and face it. Eventually, you will win. With these words of encouragement, I single-handedly, I had nobody else with me. Then, of course, I got the order stayed from the High Court. But then, it was Markley was completely rattled. But I faced it, and I tried to convince the Chief Minister that please tell me what mistake have I done. Fortunately, new elections took place. After a few months, this chief minister was voted out of power. Then again, a new chief minister came, Chaudhary Devilal, a very nice gentleman, very pro-development. They all knew something unfair was being done to us. So, by following a process of law, a procedure which are very elaborate, you had to make a representation, court of inquiry is appointed, all this big bang happened. After a few months. Our licenses were restored. We are back in business. So, like this, on several occasions, it was like a case, frankly, of two step forward, one step back. And throughout the journey, I was often uh, sort of uh, uh, advised by a great mentor of mine called Shori Saab. I call him. Who was very fluent in saying some Urdu couplets? The two Urdu couplets, which be became the backbone of my life and my zest for life in future, they were. One was Kundae Mukhalif se na ghabrai e akab. Now, the poet says Kundae means storm. Mukhalif means Opposite, Akab is called eagle. O oh, eagle, do not get scared of the opposite wind. So I say again, Kunda e mukhalif se na ghabrai e Akab. Ye to aata hai tujhe ucha uthane ke liye. This encourage me. Storm is there, I'll face it. Likewise, another one. Which became again thing same, my mentor said, "Himmat-e marda madad-e khuda." Means himmat courage, khuda God. Those people who have courage, determination, and grit, and do the right thing, God eventually help them. This is what happens in my life. 
I didn't deviate. I fought battle single-handedly with all the adversity. And you, as you've seen, I won, but very difficult. It looked impossible certain times, but I suppose my sheer courage, determination, grit and hunger to succeed made me to make it possible what appeared impossible at that time. KP fondly reminisces that what helped achieve all this was TLF's work ethic and moral values with no room for shortcuts. Chaudhary Sahib always believed in being straight and true in business and would repeatedly tell KP to never flag from this path. KP followed Chaudhary Sahib's vision and example and he proudly says that his son Rajiv Singh is today enhancing the legacy. The fourth generation of the family now carries the same values thus continuing the legacy for 76 years unheard of anywhere in the world. Earlier in life, K.P. Singh is the recipient of various international and national awards, notably among them being the Padma Bhushan in 2010 by President of India, Officer of the Order of Monaco by Prince Albert II of Monaco in 2010, Asian Entrepreneur of the Year Award in Antwerp by PwC in 2011 and Indian of the Year by NDTV in 2007 along with a doctorate from the Panth University and Delhi Ratna Award for his exceptional services towards the development of the country including Delhi. And now came the coveted Lifetime Achievement Award to KP from none other than Ernst & Young, widely recognized as the premier organization to recognize true pioneers in the field of business worldwide. EY recognized the fact that the unachievable had actually been achieved, with a city like Gurgaon created from next to nothing by KP. The sheer depth of the EY Lifetime Achievement Award is staggering. For the ultimate winner, KP was chosen from 60 countries and 145 cities from amongst hundreds of successful entrepreneurs and global achievers. This is a celebration that recognizes the deepest resolves of vision, passion and humility. For a salutation that facilitates a lifetime of values effort and sweat, carrying for decades the burden of a thousand dreams on one man's shoulders alone. As a prelude to the selection, several events were organized in the form of interactions and TV interviews and subsequent facilitation by Singh family. All this have been compiled together in the form of seven episodes. Enjoy viewing and listening to them.